So hopefully you're starting to see that this idea of a single objective monolithic scientific method, which is static and doesn't change and can clearly differentiate between all the different ways of studying reality, that th this is a fantasy. No such thing has ever existed and can never exist in th even in theory. It doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. All of these different ways of knowing nature come with a ton of assumptions, hidden assumptions, which themselves have never been tested and are not objective. And when you select one method over another method, realize that this is your own subjective mind relativistically deciding that, okay, well, this will be our method. That's not objective. There's nowhere in the universe that says that like, well, microscopes are valid method, x-rays are valid method, radar is valid method, but witchcraft is not, and map making is not, and film making is not. This is far too simplistic, obviously. It doesn't work that way. So one of the mistakes of modern science is that it assumes there is an objective method and that such a method is possible, whereas in fact, in reality, method is completely relativistic. And what I'm saying here is worse than you even think. I'm not just saying that we haven't found the method yet, but one exists to be found in the future. What I'm saying is that there just isn't such a method in the entire universe because the universe is relativistic. All knowledge is relativistic. Let me ask you this. If I take a frog and I put him in a blender, blend him up into like a juice, and then I study his cells under a microscope, and I make some conclusions from that, like, okay, I can, there's this fact about the frog and that fact about the frog, and then through this method, I, I come to understand the frog. I study the, the frog through the, this blended liquid that I make in the blender. Um, and I say, okay, now I understand the frog. It's just a bunch of cells. and a bunch of fluids and matter. Is that valid science? Is that all there is to science? What if there's more to science? What if there's more about this frog than just the cells it's made out of? You see, to put a frog in a blender and to think that you can understand the frog by blending it up and studying its cells under a microscope, this comes with serious metaphysical and epistemic assumptions within the mind of the scientist. The scientist has to believe that this is a valid way of understanding what frogs are. Now, sure enough, maybe that is a tiny portion of how to understand a frog. But can you imagine a scientist who only studies animals by putting them in blenders? and then studying the liquid that comes out. And then he convinces himself that, well, that's it. That's all there is to nature. But then some other guy comes along like me and says, well, you know what? I don't like to blend frogs in a blender. I will study the frog in other ways. I'll, you know, I'll keep the frog as a pet. I'll study his behavior and his mating habits and so forth, his eating habits. I'll get to know the frog that way. And maybe I'll understand more about the frog that way than by blending it up and studying under a microscope. And, but the scientist who blends frogs, he says, what are you talking about? That's not science. That's some bullshit pseudoscience. That's some new agey stuff. You know, oh yeah, you're going to keep a frog as a pet. Oh, that's not academic. That's not objective. So my question to you is who's right? Me or him? And of course, the answer is that neither one of us is right. It's relative. 